To be realized, then, the wish must be resolved into the feeling of being, or having, or witnessing the state sought. This is accomplished by assuming the feeling of the wish fulfilled. The feeling which comes in response to the question, how would I feel were my wish realized, is the feeling which should monopolize and then mobilize your attention as you relax into sleep. You must be in the consciousness of being or having that which you want to be or to have before you drop off to sleep. Once asleep, Man has no freedom of choice. His entire slumber is dominated by his last waking concept of self. It follows, therefore, that he should always assume the feeling of accomplishment and satisfaction before he retires in sleep. Come before me with singing and thanksgiving. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Your mood prior to sleep defines your state of consciousness as you enter into the presence of your everlasting lover, the subconscious. She sees you exactly as you feel yourself to be. If, as you prepare for sleep, you assume and maintain the consciousness of success by feeling, I am successful, you must be successful. Lie flat on your back with your head on a level with your body. Feel as you would were you in possession of your wish and quietly relax into that. Relax into unconsciousness. He that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. Nevertheless, he giveth his beloved sleep. The subconscious never sleeps. Sleep is the door through which the conscious waking mind passes to be creatively joined to the subconscious. Sleep conceals the creative act, while the objective world reveals it. In sleep, man impresses the subconscious with his conception of himself. What more beautiful description of this romance of the conscious and the subconscious is there than the, that told in the Song of Solomon? By night on my bed I sought him whom my soul loveth. I found him whom my soul loveth. I held him and I would not let him go, until I had brought him into my mother's house and into the chamber of her that conceived me. Preparing to sleep, you feel yourself into the state of the answered wish, and then relax into unconsciousness. Your realized wish is he whom you seek. By night on your bed, you seek the feeling of the wish fulfilled, that you may take it with you into the chamber of her that conceived you, into sleep are the subconscious which gave you form, that this wish may also may be given expression. This is the way to discover and conduct your wishes into the subconscious. Feel yourself in the state of the realized wish and quietly drop off to sleep. Night after night you should assume the feeling of being, having, and witnessing that which you seek to be, possess, and see manifested. Never go to sleep feeling discouraged or dissatisfied. Never sleep in the consciousness of failure. Your subconscious, whose natural state is sleep, sees you as you believe yourself to be. And whether it be good, bad, or indifferent, the subconscious will faithfully embody your belief. As you feel, so do you impress her, and she, the perfect lover, gives form to these impressions and outpictures them as the children of her beloved. Thou art all fair, my love, there is no spot in thee, is the attitude of mind to adopt before dropping off to sleep. Disregard appearances and feel that things are as you wish them to be, for he calleth things that are not seen as though they were and the unseen becomes seen. To assume the feeling of satisfaction is to call conditions into being which will mirror satisfaction. Signs follow, they do not precede. Proof that you are will follow the consciousness that you are. It will not precede it. You are an eternal dreamer, dreaming non-eternal dreams. Your dreams take form as you assume the feeling of their reality. 
do not limit yourself to the past. Knowing that nothing is impossible to consciousness, begin to imagine states beyond the experiences of the past. Whatever the mind of man can imagine, man can realize. All objective, visible states were first subjective, invisible states, and you called them into visible states by assuming the feeling of their reality. The creative process is first imagining and then believing the state imagined. Always imagine and expect the best. The world cannot change until you change your conception of it. As within, so without. Nations as well as people are only what you believe them to be. No matter what the problem is, no matter where it is, no matter whom it concerns, you have no one to change but yourself. And you have neither opponent nor helper in bringing about the change within yourself. You have nothing to do but convince yourself of the truth of that which you desire to see manifested. As soon as you succeed in convincing yourself of the reality of the state sought, results follow to confirm your fixed belief. You never suggest to another the state which you desire to see him express. Instead, you convince yourself that he is already that which you desire him to be. Realization of your wish is accomplished by assuming the feeling of the wish fulfilled. You cannot fail unless you fail to convince yourself of the reality of your wish. A change of belief is confirmed by a change of expression. Every night as you drop off to sleep, feel satisfied and spotless. For your subjective lover always forms the objective world in the image and likeness of your conception of it. The conception defined by your feeling. The waking two-thirds of your life on earth ever cooperates or bears witness to your subconscious impressions. The actions and events of the day are effects. They are not causes. Free will is only freedom of choice. Choose you this day whom you shall serve is your freedom to choose the kind of mood you assume. But the expression of the mood is the secret of the subconscious. The subconscious receives impressions only through the feelings of man and in a way known only to itself gives these impressions form and expression. The actions of man are determined by his subconscious impressions. His illusion of free will, his belief in freedom of action, is but ignorance of the causes which make him act. He thinks himself free because he has forgotten the link between himself and the event. Man awake is under compulsion to express his subconscious impressions. If in the past he unwisely impressed himself, then let him begin to change his thought and feeling. For only as he does so will he change his world. Do not waste one moment in regret, for to think feelingly of the mistakes of the past is to reinfect yourself. Let the dead bury the dead. Turn from appearances and assume the feeling that would be yours were you already the one you wish to be. Feeling a state produces that state. The part you play on the world stage is determined by your conception of yourself. By feeling your wish fulfilled and quietly relaxing into sleep, you cast yourself in a star role to be played on earth tomorrow. And while asleep, you are rehearsed and instructed in your part. The acceptance of the end automatically wills the means of realization. Make no mistake about this. If, as you prepare for sleep, you do not con consciously feel yourself into the state of the answered wish, then you will take with you into the chamber of her who, who conceived you the sum total of the reactions and feelings of the waking day. And while asleep, you will be instructed in the manner in which they will be expressed tomorrow. You will rise believing that you are a free agent, not realizing that every action and event of the day is predetermined.